Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a camera path animation in Rhino. A camera path animation can be used to create a panning animation such as the one being displayed here or a camera movement that focuses on a single object in your Rhino scene. To set an animation like this up I'm going to be using this scene here and we're going to be using Rhino's inbuilt camera path tools. Now these tools are found under the render tools options and in the animation tools which is this film clip here under here and we're going to be using the path animation tool there. If you can't see the render tools option you can also find them under tools, toolbar layout and if we go to default we can turn on the animation tools here and it will float here. We can also open up the animation setup. Now we've gone through the other animation tools in previous videos but today we're going to be focusing on the path animation tool here which is the third one along. Now in order to create a path animation you need a path for your camera to travel along and also a path or a single point for your camera to focus on. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a path for our camera and a single point for that camera to focus on. So I'm just going to draw out a single line and we'll just kind of draw it across the frame like so not really worrying too much about if that moves vertically as well so it's about there and we're going to also place a single point on the top of one of these towers let's put it in the middle actually so you can see it about there so once you've got those two items what we're going to do is select the setup path animation tool we'll select our path here and then we'll select our point for our target like so. And once you've done that it will come up with the set animation options. Now you can here you can choose the number of frames in your animation and the number of frames dictates how long that animation will be. Bear in mind that if your animation is running at 30 frames a second then 300 frames will be 10 seconds of animation. I'm going to set mine to 100 frames for now which is about 3 seconds of animation. Um, the file type I'll keep as JPEG and the capture method I'll keep as render full for now but you can also capture it out using the viewport options you have here we could do kind of an artistic or a rendered viewport if you wanted as well but if you choose the render full option it will use whichever renderer you have logged on to your Rhino at this time I'm currently using Rhino's built-in renderer for this particular task so we use render full make sure the viewport is the same as the one you're in and then hit OK now once you've set that you won't see any noticeable difference but to review or play back that animation we just need to hit this green preview button here and it will play back the animation and there you can see that it's panning the camera along that path and focusing it in on that tower there. Now if we wanted to slightly edit this perhaps we want the line to be perfectly flat I think at the moment there's some slight kind of vertical lift you see it's kind of a lower down on the right hand side and it gets vertically higher on the left so if you want your camera to be smooth on a horizontal plane to do that we can use the set point command which is just setpt there make sure we go to set the z axis and if we align it to the world it will flatten the two points of that line on the z axis and then we can move it up back to where we want it to here and that way our line is now completely flat. Now this is fine if you want to be focusing on that single point there but if you want your camera to track in a horizontal motion we can also set the target to be a path as well so we have our camera path here and we can also make a target path so our target and camera move simultaneous to one another. Now if we wanted it to be a flat pan like the original animation I showed at the beginning of this video where we're just slowly panning across the scene in a horizontal motion like this all we need to do is copy our camera path and make sure that copy is exactly the same for our target path as well so the camera stays fixed in that horizontal motion so to do this all we really need to do is use the copy tool I'm just going to copy this line and paste it back where it was there and then I'm just going to use the gumball just so I can move it horizontally to a position where I will need it sort of up here there so you see there we've essentially got two parallel lines now I'm gonna slightly move these upwards just so they're not kind of clashing with my geometry there but that should do it 
So now we've got those two parallel lines. Let's go and set up our path animation again. We're going to choose the first path for our camera and the second path for our target instead of the point this time. Um, we'll do 100 frames again. We'll keep all the same settings. And this time, if we preview it back, you'll see now that it's fixed horizontally and it's moving across. Whereas when we did it with the single point, the camera path and the point, like so, when we preview that, it fixes on that point. So that's the difference between those two ways of using this single tool there. Now, for this particular animation, I'm going to just use the flat camera pan. So we're going to be using these two lines here. And I'm going to up the number of frames to 300 frames there. With that, from that move to 100 to 300, you'll see that it's a lot slower and a lot smoother now. If we want that to be even slower, we could set that up to a thousand frames and that would be even slower. So the number of frames you set in your animation will dictate the length of the animation. So that's a really important thing to remember when doing an animation like this. Once we've got that set and we're happy with that particular pan, we've previewed it and it's looking good. The next thing we need to do is essentially render out the frames of that animation. Now, when you take an animation from Rhino, it will essentially save it out as a series of JPEG images. And you'll see in this one I've done here, and we've done a rendered one here as well. So you end up with about 300 still JPEG images, with each of them as one frame of the animation, as you can see here. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that our render is set up correctly. Now, for that, we can go to Render, Render Properties. Yeah. And we're just going to check the render settings to see that it will be rendering out each frame correctly. So here is our size. Now, the, render, the size of the render will dictate the length of time it takes to render an image out. So bear that in mind. If you've got 300 frames and it's taking kind of half an hour for each frame, it's going to take an awful long time to render out the whole thing. So you want to minimize that time per frame for each of these. So make sure your resolution is not too high. I'm going to keep it around this, which is the viewport size for this particular image. Now, here you can also choose the quality of the image, and the quality will usually dictate how long the image takes to render. But for this, we're actually going to override this quality panel, and we're going to dictate the length of time in the advanced settings down here. Now, where it says sessions, there's a samples number, and this number relates to the amount of samples each image will run through in order to feel like it's achieved its kind of highest quality. If you set a render to high quality, it will go to 1,500 samples, and low quality is about 200, 300 samples there. So to put this into action, I can show you what this means. So if I turn off this override production render quality, it will just use this final quality option. And if we go and do a render with that, so we're going to go render preview and render this particular view out you'll see that it's going to take a while to render the whole image and it won't stop until it's hit that target samples number. Now for a final quality render that's 1500 samples so that can take quite a long time. So here we go it's loading the mesh in and once it's loaded that in it will start running through the samples and you're going to see this down in the bottom left hand corner when the image starts rendering out. So once it's loaded the mesh here we go path trace sample and you can see here it's counting up to that target of 1500. So at the moment it's taking about 10 seconds to hit 30 samples there. Now it's good to do a test and have a look at the quality of the image you're getting out. The more samples you get the less noisy it will be. So all these little bits of noise you'll see will slowly disappear the more samples it has there. But if you're happy with a little bit of noise and you want to reduce the render time, you can lock in that target sample value to a much lower value. And this is particularly useful for animations where you've got a lot of frames rendering out. You don't want each one to be rendering out 1,500 samples that might take quite a long time per frame. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to lock this in at 50 samples. So when it gets to 50, it's going to save that file and then move on to the next frame of the animation. This way it will keep our animation time very short and that way we can render out all our frames in one go. So let's just stop this for now. And then we're going to go back to render, render properties. 
and then to override that quality option we're going to scroll right down to the bottom again where it says session in this samples value we're going to type in 50 and then we're going to click on this override production render quality and that way this value will override whatever the quality you've got set here so this option now no longer matters because we're overriding it in this panel here and what you'll see is once we've done that if we do another render preview it will only now count up to 50 frames and when it does that it will stop so here we are loading up the mesh again and now you can see down in the bottom left it's only counting up to 50 and it's going to take a lot less time to render it out because we've got that target now at 50 so once it hits that value for this single frame it will just stop but if we do an animation it will save that and move on to the next frame so there you can see that took around 18 seconds and it stopped now so now we've set that sample value to be a lot lower we can now render out our animation now I'm just going to do one more preview just to check that that's still as I want it and when you're happy with that animation and you want to render out the final thing instead of the preview button we're going to hit this record animation button now it will ask you where you want to save it now I'm just going to be using the default folder for now and when you're happy with that location all you need to do is hit enter there and what that would do is it will start rendering out each of those frames from frame 1 all the way to frame 300 in this case or whatever you've set it to and because I've set my sample value at 50 it will only need 50 samples per frame so it will be a lot quicker and you can see it here it's loading up the first frame it will render this out and once this is done it will move on to the second so you see there it's very rapid we're going to get through these in sort of five seconds there and now it's on to the next frame so very quickly we can load through each of those frames and what you end up with is a series of JPEG images much like the ones we've shown at the beginning and I'm just going to stop this now so it won't render those out but as you can see what we'll end up with here is a series of JPEG images like these ones in this frame here where I've got 0 to 300 there and what we then need to do is take those JPEG images and stitch them back into an animation. Now I've already done a video on how to use After Effects for this process and I'll put that in the link in the description of the video too. So I hope you found this video helpful. It's just a very quick introduction on how to do a camera path animation in Rhino using Rhino's built-in renderer. If you want to check out any more videos on setting up animations in Rhino or general Rhino modeling, please feel free to check those out on the channel. Thanks for watching.